just so we can see in the same principle, do we agree that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the best of individuals that gave dawah? I said that to Rahim as well, but I want to say the same thing with you. Was he the best of individuals that gave dawah? This is a question that I cannot say no to. Absolutely. So you're 100% yaqeen that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his dawah was the best of type of dawah. Yes. Sah. So, okay. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, no, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a crack there. What's the crack? He's, he's the best person to give dawah to the people at his time. Okay. Now, now I want to ask you a question now. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was only, his type of dawah was best at his time. So for example, right now, when we read the works of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his type of dawah is not applicable for now. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. I'm saying that it could, it could apply to some people, but it's not obvious that it works for everyone. Okay, just to clarify. So if you said that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dawah was best at his time, so the dawah that we use right now, there's something better than of it. No. No, but that's I'm what you said. No, no, wait, wait, no. Wait, 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 Take somebody from the 20th century and put him back uh, yes. to the prophet. Yes. It's conceivable that the prophet used different arguments for that person. Okay. For example, when but they we come, do, we don't know. We don't know what he would have used. No, no, no. Probably listen. Do we agree that the Quran was only for the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his nation, or for the whole of time until Yom Qiyamah? Yom Qiyamah. So when Allah has given us verses in the Quran, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking to his disciples, can we only implement it at that time, or can we implement it at all times? We have to implement it at all times in order to describe what the religion. Okay, so, so in order for me to give dawah to an individual right now, do I have to mention, can I mention the arguments that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned to the, to the individuals that were not Muslim, to individuals right now? Of course you can. Okay, yeah, so but is there anything better of it right now in this context? In this context? It has, it has to be tailored to what this person is familiar with at this so, time. I, I understand when it comes to the environment, when it comes to society, of course, it depends on the society that you're living in, that you might have to tailor your discussion and your approach. But do you agree that the foundations will stay the same? I, I don't disagree that the foundations are the same, but you have to keep in mind what this person, the way that they're thinking, the concepts are in their mind. No, because you said to me like, very clearly that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dawah is best at his time. Did you say that? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his type of dawah was best at his time. So when you when you make this assertion, that means the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his dawah, is not the best at all times. For, 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 for those people that he, that he gave dawah to, it was the best possible form that could have given to them. Absolutely. But what about now? It depends on the person. No, no, what about now? Is there something better than of it? Is it is the argument that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said was it the best argument? It's not, it's not about better or worse. No, no, it is, Akhi, because you said, no, no, look, no, our role model is... It's a type of argument. How, what, ultimately has to be tailored to the audience that you're trying to reach. When you say tailored, when you say tailored, are we saying that the, the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have to be tailored? Are we saying that the wahi of the Qur'an has to be tailored? You have to say it in Arabic, of course I have to say it in English. That's different. So when you say tailored, when you say tailored, I'm talking about the, the revelation that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, for example. Explain what the religion for example, is, what, has to be the same. For example, when I speak to an atheist, I'm going to mention the verses in the Quran. I'm going I'm to ask them, were you created by nothing or were you the creator themselves? Are you saying this argument has to be tailored in, a, in an element that I have to add philosophy? To me, that argument is also a philosophical argument. No, philosophy and reason I, I is different. Think, I think we're... Uh, no, because... One second, one second. Bro, what the issue is, yeah, I think you have a, a different definition of what philosophy is. What I'm saying to you is that I, I don't believe philosophy is reason only. Let Look, me try and let me, Philosophy, as you're defining it, is using reason to, using reason to uncover things of the height. No, that's not, the, that's not what philosophy is, though. According to who? No, I'm asking you. No, look, the thing is, yeah, when I say the Quran, when I use the verse in the Quran, Allah tells us to use our reason. Allah says, Afala ta'akilun, will you not reason? Allah also says, it is a, is a verse in the Quran where it clearly states, you know, the people that will go were in the Yom Al Qiyamah, they were going to say, there's a verse in the Quran that says, only if we had to use our reason. So that insinuates that reason is not philosophy. Reason is for us to use in the Quran as well. So we have to use reason. But again, with reason is a criteria. If we only use our reason, that becomes subjective. For example, there's individuals that use their reason to believe that, let's say the Quran is not the word, it's not the truth, because that's their reason. That's subjective. So we have an objective truth that we follow, which is the Quran and Sunnah. But when it comes to reason, that could be very subjective. So I want to understand from your perspective, just so I can wrap up as well, is that when it comes to philosophy, do you believe it's necessary for me to understand my religion? Or for any Muslim, sorry. Is it necessary? I would, I would say, I would say, reason is necessary for you to understand the religion. Allah tells us to use reason, so that's not the question. I'm asking philosophy. No, again, I, we're, we're, we're coming from different uh, starting points. I, I don't think we have the same understanding of what philosophy means. I, I would define it as just yeah, using reason. Do you so philosophy? You know the Greek philosophy. Are you aware of Greek philosophy, like Aristotle, Plato? Would you classify that as philosophy? 
That's in the broad, yes, no science philosophy. Okay, so you do classify... I, do, I, do I agree that, that it only involved correct, correct logical steps? No. Would I agree that it, it started from the right starting point? No. Okay, so the philosophy already is flawed as a flawed foundation. No. If you, if you build a logical argument from a flawed premise, you would reach a flawed conclusion. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That's what I'm saying to you. When it comes to philosophy, having as a Muslim yourself, yeah, Allah has given you Izzah, who being a Muslim. Allah has given his respect. He's given us honor. Yeah, Izzah. He's given us honor. In, like, in Urdu and Pashto, we call it Ghairat. So he's given us honor for becoming Muslims. He has given us honor for giving us revelations that we can use to convey and it's applicable at all times. For example, when I speak to a Christian, when I speak to a Jew, the, the dawah that I give will be the exact same dawah that the Sahaba used to give to those individuals at that time. Tell me how it would be different. Because you know it's very concerning, very, very concerning. Think about this, brother, yeah? If you're saying the Prophet Muhammad's dawah was only best at his time. Do you want to re redefine yourself? I'm going to give you the opportunity. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to give you the opportunity. There's no need to classify. There's no need to sort of play it's, this. It's concerning. Argue, argue, it's concerning. This argumentative chess game where you're trying to box your opponent into being. Brother, I'll, I'll be honest. It's nothing. Or or Look, it's for your own. It's for your own iman. It's for your own aqidah. You are, are going to be judged between Allah. Both okay. Of us. Both of us. Both as well. of us. But that's what I'm saying. There's so, no need to say these things. We understand this. Okay, but look, you said, okay, clarify the Naki. I'm giving you the opportunity to clarify yourself, yeah? I don't have to. You do, Akhi. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. You said only, only the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Go on. I'll let you speak, brother. I'm feeling this is very, the I'm getting from is this is very aggressive. I'm aggressive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This feels very aggressive. Brother, listen, I'm Pakistani. We're passionate. That's it, brother. That's all it is. So if you feel like that, bro, I can apologize, but I'm not aggressive. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you don't need to get a confession from me. Uh, okay, look, brother, look. What, what me and you, look, you love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Both want to do the same look, I, I love Allah, yeah? So Allah tells us in the Quran to enjoy the good and forbid the evil. So for example, you know, other nations, they did not forbid the evil. That's why those na nations were perished. So right now, Akhi, what I'm doing here, yeah, with, with all due respect, is I'm forbidding the evil. I believe, I believe you have a very corrupt belief. Okay, Akhi, respect, Akhi, respect. Res I'm, saying it, I'm saying it directly to you. I'm being, I'm being face to face to you, direct. When, when you say these words, and when you say the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his dawah was only best at that time. It gives me an impression that you believe the dawah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we use right now, there's something better of it. And there's something that we have to tailor in order to mix with the people that are living at this, at this time. It's not, it's I'll let you clarify the brother. If, I miss, if I'm wrong, you can clarify for me. Uh, the only thing I'm saying is that um, You have to take into context who he was speaking to. Absolutely, that's, that's all I'm saying. 100%. And, and the extrapolation from his, from his, uh, from his experience in the Mecca time to now is. I guess we're, we're differing on how that looks like. So like, let's say the approach. For example, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was lenient sometimes, and sometimes the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was harsh. Uh, okay, can we agree that that's that? that no, that's I, the look, the, uh, the, the, the extrapolation from his experience? So I'm trying to clarify, yeah. So I'm saying, yeah, if the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to speak to different people in different ways, yes, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the most concise with his speech. No, no, he, I, I, don't mean, I, don't mean, uh, I don't mean in terms of so tenor or the way, the way he speaks. So I mean, I mean, are you talking about the speech? Content of the argument. Okay, look, Akhi, yeah, look, for example, let's say there's an individual, the Prophet Muhammad would, would see his circumstances, would see his context, and would communicate it with him accordingly. Same thing right now, if I see someone that's a bit very aggressive, yeah, I would speak to him in a way that befits him, okay, because sometimes you can't always be nice. Sometimes harshness is praiseworthy as well. Like, you know, sometimes being nice is praiseworthy, and sometimes being nice could not be praiseworthy as well, because it depends on the context. So, that, what I'm trying to say to you is, is not that approach. What I'm trying to say to you is about the way we have commu uh, the communication that we have and the foundation that we use and the criteria that we use. I'm saying to you, my argument content, is, I'm, I'm saying, argument. yeah, the content, yeah, the yeah, content. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying to you is, that I believe philosophy is bad thing. Okay. I believe philosophy should not be used because we believe as Muslims that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the best of individuals to give dawah. And he never in his lifetime used philosophy in his dawah with his, with his uh, ummah. Just, just to, to close this up, do you agree that the difference between us is just the extrapolation? of his experience during his time to now. I'm just like, trying to understand, like, are you, do you have the issue with the content that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I, if I mention it now? Um, rather, if I speak to atheists. It's about, it's about so, Let's say, uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave many, many arguments and so on and so forth. Sah. The question is about which of these 
should be more emphasized during our time. Like that, that sort of, that's, Look, I, th I think that's where we're discussing. So I, I would slightly agree with you. I would say that like, like, the foundations, for example, Tawheed, as Muslims, we believe the most important thing is Tawheed. So when, when the Prophet Muhammad used to come to his people, to his nations, and he used to warn against the idols, and he used to tell those individuals that the past nations were perished because of idol worship, yes, I would mention it to them. But which, but I would mention everything that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in regards to content now as well, because I believe the Quran and the Sunnah is for all of mankind, for all times, until the Yawl Qiyamah. Understand. They're saying that everything the Prophet said in his da'wah has to be said to everybody who gives da'wah to. Is that what you mean? When it comes to the foundations, yes. Yeah, the foundations. Yeah. You, you mean, you mean, you mean explaining what the religion is? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. But do, do we agree that philosophy is, is a disbelief though? It's, it's I don't know what that means. I don't know what... Okay. Agree, at least agree that I gave you an example. I gave you an example. So Plato and Aristotle, when they use philosophy... philosophical. Okay, no, forget that. You know the, the, the previous, for example, uh, Ibn Arabi, yeah? He went so deep into philosophy that he started to believe that the world is eternal. Do you believe that philosophy is correct? By that you mean he started with some, 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 uh, some initial arguments or yes. initial um, premise and premise, uh, yeah, yeah. And then he went through some logical logical deduction and then, and then ended up with a conclusion. But the reason why that happened, why? Because of philosophy. No, no, no. For example, the attributes of Allah, no, 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 yeah? No, no, no. It's most likely because the premise is wrong. The champions of one. Champions of one. I can't hear you. Champions of one. Okay. He, he came way before, right? And he um, looked into the deep matters of big philosophy. Along with him, he started negating Allah's attributes. Because of that. So no, could it be because he made a mistake? No, because he... he you know why? Yes, he made a mistake. Really? You know what the mistake was? What? Using philosophy. Let me tell you why. I think, I think, I think, I think, I would, I would phrase that as saying he made a mistake because he started with the, he started with the wrong premise. The wrong foundation is always philosophy. Men, look, no, no, no. twisting truth with falsehood will always lead to falsehood. Let me tell you why. For example, let me give you an example, brother. Yeah. Let me give you an example of using philosophy. Let me give you an example of using philosophy. Because uh, unfortunately, it's going to be just sound like, sound like using reason. No. Have you been to Argentina? No, I haven't. Uh, do you know it exists? Yes. Why do you know it exists? Because uh, I've seen, I've got witnesses of people going to Argentina. So otherwise it would be a conspiracy? That's not reason, that's reason, that's reason. I would call that's not philosophy. Would... No, for example, like for example, some of the people at that time, previously, like you mentioned Jahid, uh, yes, go ahead. Like those individuals, they used to negate the attributes of Allah. For example, like some uh, some of those individuals, they only affirmed four attributes of Allah. Yeah, and the other attributes, they totally negated it. Other attributes, they said it's metaphorical. Allah's power is metaphorical. Allah's highness is metaphorical. They never used to affirm the ma'ana. Yeah, so. So you need philosophy so, for understanding the ghayb. That's why you So look, even for example, the ghayb, or non -gayb. When you use philosophy as a criteria to understand your religion and your foundations, this is when falsehood comes in. Because I believe, and as Muslims we all should believe, the authority that we have is the Quran, the Sunnah, and the Salaf of Salihin. The Salaf of Salihin were individuals that lived closer, of, of the, uh, closer to the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because they lived closer to the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their understanding and the implementation was better than people like us. Philosophy did not exist in the first 100 years of Islam. Did it exist? They only existed after those individuals came and they had like, like for example the Ashari, the Ashari, the Mutazilites, the people, you know the people that used to be the Quran is created. All of those foundations came from philosophy. That's what we say as Muslims. So look, I think the disagreement that we have. Philosophy is just reason and logic. Okay, cool. That's that's what the issue is. Like I understand, like if you say reason, I'm, I'm on your side, brother. We should use reason. Because Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran to use a reason. So I'm not going to disagree with you. But when it comes to philosophy, it depends. Do you mean the Greek philosophy? Do you mean the philosophies at the time when the Ashari's and the Mutazilites, when they started to affirm that the Quran is created, or when some or when some like Ibn Arabi used to believe that the, the uh, word is eternal? Is it that philosophy? So it's very loose, it's very broad. Do so you understand from my perspective? Yeah. Okay, brother, it's very nice talking to you, yeah? And if you believe that was being aggressive, I do apologize, Akhi, that's not me. I'm just Pakistani, but we just speak like that, yeah? Zakhla, brother, yeah? Take care of yourself. Yes, Is this the Muslim discussion with philosophy or something like that?